you bleed green? Are you an ultimate Eagles football fan? Well, you're in the right place. Well, you're in the right place. <laughs> Ready? Right. This is Birds 365. Hosted by the new Mac and Mac, Jody McDonald and John McMullen. <laughs> Here we go, here we go! Who collectively have covered and talked about more than 50 plus years of Eagles football. Kick off your day with Birds 365. You'll get debate. We love to argue. You'll get the real story from inside the locker room. And you'll hear from some of the great football minds from around the region. You're about to become an Eagles insider. Get in the game. Join Jody Mack and Johnny Mack and join the football community that flocks to Birds 365. Birds 365 starts right now. Welcome to the NFL. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. E A G L E S Eagles. And a good good morning, Birds fans. Appreciate you streaming in here with us. I'm Birds 365 on the Jacob Media YouTube channel. It's Mac and Mac, John McMullen and Jordan McDonald. They're here to hang with you for the next couple hours. J Mac, it's the last week of March. We're more than a month away from the draft. Free agent has slow, slowed down precipitously, but there's a lot to talk about today because a lot of very important NFL people are meeting in Orlando for the owners' meetings. Uh, you will hear from over the course. Now it's the, the list is already shrinking over the next two days. Um, Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni, and Jeffrey Laurie, coach, general manager, and owner of the team all will speak. And the GM got to go first. Howie Roseman spoke yesterday to the assembled media, both local and national. And surely you knew this was coming. Talked about the, the new Eagles, the players that he acquired during the offseason. And so, had some interesting things to say about uh, a lot of them. The first of which was Saquon Barkley, who's a special player. That was the word of the day. Special. special. He's a weapon. Special. I hear, I keep hearing weapon and special. With yes, Saquon. special was heavy yesterday, those from Howie Roseman. And I, I'm buying. Um, we'll know when he gets out there. We'll know when the Eagles start running plays. We'll know when we get a good five, six game grasp of Kellen Moore and what his Eagle is go, Eagles offense is going to look like. But uh, in other words, we'll hear plenty over the next however many months leading up to the season and in season as well as bell cow. Do you know where that one came from, Johnny? I don't know the background, the history of when a running back is the number one guy and gets more than his fair share of carries. He is known as a bell cow back. You know the history of that particular football phrase? Well, the cow with the bell on is the lead. So is the lead. I assume. Okay. I assume it. Yeah, that's been around. Sorry, forever, uh, I know old McDonald had a farm e i e i o, but I didn't know that the the lead. The, the, the lead cow has yeah. to wear a bell. Um, yeah, that that one's been around for longer than me. So yes, it's been around for, for a good. long time. Um, yeah, unlike hip drop, which I find ironic because I got yelled at by people. Oh, it did. Oh, they just they didn't do it ten years ago. I wasn't aware. Everybody knew when everybody woke up a decade ago. They just started started since the NFL didn't label it till last year. Right. Boy, it's easy to. Put a freaking blindfold over these some of these people, but anyway, I digress. And in Saquon's case, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, look, I, I've been above board about this. We disagree. Myself, I'm talking about the Eagles on the evaluation of the player. They think the player is special, and as that's the word. And if he is, it's going to work great. Um, so hopefully they're evaluated. Then the valuation, the contract doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and to be honest, it doesn't matter anyway, with the, with the salary cap exploding and all that, not only this year, but, uh, projected to be years down the road, it's not going to matter other than you're going to get, it's going to affect you on the field. And that's the bigger part of it anyway. Um, are they getting this right? I don't think they are. 
Uh, now I know you're on the other side of the yeah. fence, and uh, that's fun. Uh, and a lot of people are on this. That's uh, it, only time will tell. We'll find yeah. out exactly how good Saquon Barkley is. And one of the differences you and I have in uh, all of the streamers we have here and calls I take on WIP people at me on um, Twitter. Most people think Saquon Barkley has gone backwards, that he had this unbelievable rookie year looking like he's going to be an MVP candidate every single year, and he hasn't reproduced that since. And the numbers say that is correct. Why has that been the case? Could be the big injury that he had, and he just isn't quite the player he used to be. And you have to acknowledge that as a possibility, or you can look at the players around him. And I think the running backs are uh, extraordinarily tied to the quality of the team around them. Uh, offensive line, other weapons, your quarterback. That's what I'm going to hang my hat on. And it seems to me like that's what the Eagles are hanging their hat on. The Giants haven't been real good. Uh, they, the, that rookie year, he had a legitimate quarterback. And Eli Manning, even though he was an older and also himself declining He's still better than Daniel Jones at all that the Giants have thrown out there the last several years. Put him behind an eagle offensive line with an eagle passing game with an eagle legitimate franchise quarterback. And I think all of a sudden Saquon Barkley is going to look a lot more like that rookie Saquon Barkley than the last couple of years in Giant Blue. Yeah, I, I, I don't see any way that can possibly happen for a couple reasons. And only one is the injury. But uh, also, you know, if you study the history of running backs, it's just the level of touches he's had over the years. Um, enormous, uh, whether he's having a good year, bad year, indifferent year, injured year, he's at 1,500 touches. And people look at his age and say, well, it's not too bad, 27. But it's not about the age. It's about the touches as far as I'm concerned. And by the way, how he, at least it, to his credit, brought that up he said he knows you know you got to keep an eye on it but again they think he's different they think he's special they think you know his uh the way he takes takes care of his body makes him different from others and won't affect him as great uh, okay let, let let's see um so that to me is a bigger part the injury is a big part i don't i don't think he's the same explosiveness but that's you know i've seen and even the numbers don't bother me because I've seen above average backs over the past two years. Miles Sanders, good player, not great player, good player. 1,269 yards, 4.9 yards per carry. DeAndre Swift, good player, not great player. 10, uh, uh, 1,069 yards, 4.6 yards per carry. You know, that's that's the floor, you know. Okay, stats wise. I want to see the presence. I want to see this presence making things easier for everybody else. And that's far more esoteric and far more difficult to define. But when you watch the San Francisco 49ers, and that's what people keep bringing up, and including the Eagles, you know, sort of behind, they think he's that type of player. That's the type of presence I want to see. And that bar is going to be really, really difficult to reach. And I always talk really? about why, why do you say that? Well, because I think there's only one. And I think number two is not close. Right. But you, as you back. said, esoteric. We're not talking mm. about comping stats for stats, no. uh, average yard per K. That You're right. He's not going to reach the level of McCaffrey. McCaffrey's here and then everybody else, including Saquon Barkley, is down here. But that esoteric leadership, do you not think that Saquon Barkley? I, I don't can... think it's leadership. I think it's presence on the field. Presence. I, I think, presence. Sorry. I, 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 I think I, I misquoted you. I apologize for that. Saquon you don't think a... he can be that kind of presence? I don't. Really? There's only there's only one that's been that type of presence. Um I don't. I mean, if he were All that right. type of pre... you would see more signs of it, even with a bad supporting cast. You would see more signs of it. Um, as you did in Carolina with Christian McCaffrey, you saw more sign. I mean, there's a guy who had whatever, 1600 yards and uh, a thousand yards receiving when he was healthy in a, in a average Carolina team. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, rookie Saquon Barkley. Yes. Pre ACL Saquon Barkley. Yes. To a certain degree, not to that level, but to a certain degree, he might be second, might be third. 
might be in the conversation. But the guy with 1,500 touches and all that wear and tear, I hope I'm wrong, but, man, history history is not kind to those players. And I, I there have been some great, great running backs over the years. Um, Sean Alexander, uh, DeMarco Murray, one year. Uh, had a phenomenal year, and and they, and they took so much tread on his tire in 12 months. He was basically not the same player. Same thing with Sean Alexander in his MVP season. Never the same. I, the, 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 the wear and tear, on the, and that's why the position has been devalued uh, so, so greatly, is so impactful on this position, maybe more than any other, um, I, I, the, the, the assumption that, I don't know, he's kind of different physically or different and, and it's not going to affect him as much as Ezekiel Elliott or Sean Alexander or DeMarco Murray or players like that. I just, you know, weren't those guys special? I, I, you know, I, I think the Eagles are going away from their analytical approach with this signing. And when it comes to injuries and when it comes to that position and when it comes to uh, shelf life, I think those analytics have been proven out to be pretty rock solid over the years. Yeah. And I'll give you credit because others have said this. You haven't. Oh, they made a three year commitment to him with all that. No, on the side. No. It's not a three-year commitment. No. It's a two at most. And don't kid yourself. If Saquon Barkley comes out this year, and not only is the tread off the tire, the tire runs flat, the Eagles will move away from him in one year. They'll take their hit like they always do, and they'll go into somewhere down the road. It's a year to year. This league has become such a year-to-year -year thing, except for one position, and I mean one, quarterback. Every other player, every other contract, even if you give out a large signing bonus, a big guarantee, not uh, across the board. Uh, we we always have fun with Kirk Cousins. Shame on his agent this year. He didn't get the whole contract guaranteed. He only got like 140 out of 180 guaranteed. He's the stuffing. best in the business, Mike McCartney, man. That's, you know, Mike's great because he, uh, Kirk Cousins' agent, real quick, he, he, announces his signings himself so i love that he doesn't go through the information information broker brokers part. no right. so I, so i love him for that and then for whatever reason it became a, a shtick over the years people think he's mike mccarthy and legitimately think he's mike mccarthy and i'll tweet something out trying to tweet people and they say why aren't you paying attention to the game why aren't you working on it's hilarious that it's become this thing. I think some people are in on the joke, but early on, um, yeah, for whatever reason, people thought he was Mike McCarthy. And right. It's but he's, he's slipping because he did not get every dollar guaranteed as he has done previously. Well, you know, because... and, and, and Mike's defense, the guy's 36 coming off an Achilles. So he hey. did pretty well. He did, did pretty well. Did they did they say Houdini is now 45? He just can't be as dynamic a magician as he was before. No, they expected Houdini to be Houdini, so I'm going to hold him to those same standards. Um, that's it. Quarterback. That's the position. E even the best wide receivers don't get there, and the Jefferson deal is going to be very intriguing this year, how much he's going to get guaranteed. But the, the league at this time, you don't – there's one year. It's one year at a time. No, so we'll I, find I, out what Saquon can do next year. The, maybe, the he only, the, maybe he is the second coming of McCaffrey. Maybe he is all of a sudden look like an uh, looking like an old man. If it's the latter, okay, Eagles pay a price. They move on and they get another running back. They draft a running back. They, here, they, here's the only thing that bothers me about the contract I, I, because now that they've signed the contract, it was surprising to me. That's different. Uh, because well, do you Eagles. actually think Saquon Barkley is going to give him less than Swift did? No, no, so I'm it's saying it's got to be about the contract. No, I'm saying it was surprising to me the Eagles paid that contract to any running back named not named um Christian McCaffrey. Ha however, that's the that's the only thing that then I turned the page on the contract. Howie, for some reason, 
is trying to spin it like, oh no, no, we haven't devalued the position. Yeah, that that that, 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 that. bothers that bothers me a little bit. That, and he goes back to Brian Westbrook, which he wasn't even involved with. Exactly. And that might be a different freaking century. It might as well be in the NFL. Things move. And then Shady McCoy. Nobody's talking about Howie Roseman 1.0 anywhere. We're talking about Howie Roseman 2.0. Well, by the way, help shape the entire NFL's philosophy on this position by building two Super Bowl rosters by not paying that position. He helped shape the thinking. So don't give me that bullshit. Yeah, that was that. That's the only part that bothers me from the contract standpoint. Oh, you changed, and you changed because you think the guy's different and special, and just say that, and it's fine to me. That was him trying to. You're right. Spin the situation. No, come on. A decade ago, really, as you and I have just spoken about here in the last 10 minutes, the, the, the NFL changes on a dime every day. Yeah. And to say, whoa, but look at what we did a decade ago with Shady McCoy. A decade ago, a decade ago is 100 years in NFL life. That yeah. was. And pure... then he went back to Westbrook even before that. Okay, Howie. And the setup, so, own the signing. You you made the signing. If it works, you're going to look like a genius again. And it, to me, it's not about valuation now. It's about evaluation. And that's where we disagree. Now, hey, Eagles fans are fired up about it. I hope I'm wrong. I haven't seen it. And we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for Saquon to have a big year. He talked about a whole bunch of other players that they've also acquired some interesting things uh, about – uh, born and uh, I can't believe that he compared him to a player that the Eagles could have gotten and chose not to. So let's let's take the photocopy rather than the original. Uh, the Wish.com version. Well, in his defense, we're talking about Zach Bond and Andrew Van Ginkle. He didn't bring up Andrew Van Ginkle by name, but you know people are going to understand what you're talking about. Now, Man, Ginkle signed a two-year deal, pretty good deal. I forget. I'm trying to look it up. Uh, Twenty. Uh, it was eight. Got 10, 20, 10 but yeah, so pretty good deal. Um, again, the devil's in the details. It could very well be like Saquon. It's not a three-year deal. It's a two-year deal at most. The Van Ginkle deal could be a one-year deal. I have not seen what the guaranteed money is. Yeah, it and plus, out after you know, one year. The assumption is the Eagles didn't try to get him. We don't know that. I, you know, he is. He signed with Minnesota. He's from Iowa, so he's from that area. He went to Wisconsin. You know, he maybe wants to go back to the Midwest. Who who knows? Maybe he didn't like Big Banjo. There's a million things. But what? Why you bring up him coming off a a good season, a career season, um, who played a lot and who's projected to play even more next year? To a player who's not even projected to play that much makes no sense to me. Um, because yeah. people are going to make that comparison. And Van Ginkle's going to be better because he's going to play more, mm-hmm. number one. So he's going to get a bunch of sacks. And everybody, well, you good at Van? And Zach Bond's going to play maybe only because of injury. Why are you bringing that up? Why are you saying that? That's like an unforced error. I, I mean, would that's agree. That's what that is. That was a stretch and a reach. So he didn't agree with everything, how he said. I'm on board with say God being a bell cow back. Uh, Johnny Mac, not so much. Let's get a third opinion on this. Oh, he's going to be the bell cow back. I'm not. That my, my, so I'll ask you, Johnny. A worthwhile get the, bell cow back yeah. if you need me to So clarify. I just gave you Miles's numbers and DeAndre's numbers. So where do we start with Saquon Barkley? That's part of it. Like what? What's he gonna do? That's so much more impressive than those two guys, other than in the in, in theory, in the receiving aspect. Because you got to start at thirteen hundred running the ball. You got to start at thirteen hundred yards and what five yards a carry for him to be considered worthy of the bell cow back and the contract he got. Well, I'm, I'm looking at total total yards from scrimmage. Um, however, so it breaks out it's whether talking about and so receiving. it's because it's going to be really difficult. That's my point. Miles is 1269, 4.9 yards per carry. That was Miles' season two years ago. That's pretty good. 
that, that that's right. But what what, what, what what were Miles receiving yards? No, that's not my point. That point is well, so it's going to have. I'm giving you my point. My point is I am not going to solely compare Saquon Barkley to Miles and to Deshaun uh, DeAndre Swift by what their average yard per carry was. Okay, so so I'm talking uh, about big picture. I think I hope. I'm believing because that's what I was told yesterday. He's going to be a weapon and weapon includes catching a ball out of the backfield. So in judging how good uh, Saquon Barkley is for the Eagles this year, I'm going to look at all yards that he gets from the line of scrimmage, passing, receiving yards. No, that's and fair. I have no problem with that. I have less confidence if that's the way it's going to go, because if he's got 1,100 yards rushing, say, and he's got to be up at seven, 800 receiving. Um, yeah, I'm even less confident that this is going to work out. I'm even less confident. Well, what, what was Miles total? Uh, rushing plus passing, receiving yards. Not not talking about Miles as receiving. Miles wasn't a good receiver. Now, Didn't if you just talk go about... through this? I'm asking you a question. If you have it in front of me, please read me the numbers. What were his total yards? Miles, two years ago, yeah. went to Well, Super Bowl, I feel the reason. plus receiving yards. What was the number? I, it, a, it's not in front of me. The reason well, I'm getting the you way. You gave me the Miles rushing yards. So I figured you had the receiving yards. Because I know the rushing of. yards because, because I was the one trying to make a point, and you are misinterpreting my point. That's why I'm not. Miles is not a good receiver. Now, DeAndre was supposed to be a good receiver, was a good receiver in Detroit, oh, yeah. and that didn't pan out remotely, remotely with the Eagles' offense last year. Now, people will go down, well, now it's Kellen Moore, and Kellen Moore has a history. All right, he's got a history of cutting Austin Eckler from 100 to 50. Um, now, there were some issues with contract and injury as well, so that factors into it. But I say it all the time. Anytime I hear about getting guys in space who aren't receivers in March, I roll my eyes because I've seen the history of this league and the history of this organization and the history of most organizations. It always turns out to be a big, flat fart in church, basically, is what it ends up being. So that was my point about the receiving aspect. Now, if he turns into an 800-yard receiver, I'm with you. That's phenomenal. What I'm trying to say is I don't think that's going to happen, which is part of my evaluation of the, of the whole situation. So then I go back to the running game and say, it better start at 1,305 yards of carry, which ain't easy. It's possible, but it ain't easy. Right. And maybe you don't understand my point the same way you say I don't understand yours. I don't care. I think that it's very fair. And I promise Tommy Lawler, we're going to get to you in a second. Is he watching? He's smiling. I hope he's smiling. Yeah, yes, he, he's okay. Thank you, Tommy, for your patience. Um, I care about his total yards from the line of scrimmage. If he gets him rushing it, that's great. If he gets him receiving it, that's great. If we're going to compare him to what the Eagles have gotten from their number one back over the past two years, if he doesn't get to the Miles Sanders 1,269-yard number, but he catches the ball for 600 yards as compared to Miles, who caught it for 78, and he gets 500 more receiving yards, I'm not going to go, oh, shit, he came up with that many last yards. Yeah, but, Charity, I, I understand. I, I understand. See, I understand you're talking about production. I understand you only care about total yards from scrimmage. I'm asking you for your evaluation. Are you? Do you think he's going to get 800 yards receiving? Do you think he's going to get 1,100 yards rushing? I'm saying he ain't getting 800 yards receiving, so he better get more rushing because I, I've seen this team and this organization and their bullshit get people involved with manufactured touches, and it never comes to pass. And until I see it, I'm not believing it. Yes, I think he can get over 1,500 yards combined. Easy. Um, and that's more than Miles, and that's more than DeAndre Swift. So that's so I'm asking you, that's my question. It's split it. 1,500, split it. What's he getting? Rushing, receiving. Mm, split it right on the even numbers, 1,500. 
There's your 1,500. You'll get 500 yards rece receiving. If you think that won't be happening, okay, we'll find out when the season rolls out. I think they will throw to the back more this year because it is Saquon Barkley. So I think you'll get over 1,000 yards rushing and over 500 yards receiving. And you don't think that would be spun as a disappointment if Saquon Barkley has, say, 1,005 rushing yards after a season, after two seasons of Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift, average to above average players, above average, I shouldn't say that, above average. You don't think that will be spun as a disappointment if he's got 1,000 yards receiving and 500 yards, excuse me, 1,000 yards rushing, 500 yards receiving? I, to, to make it non disappointment, you want me to get to 1100 and 600? Oh, okay. I'm, I'm just asking. You're talking what, what, yeah, that's my point. 1500 yards. If he's 1500 yards, he will have uh reached the valuation of the contract. I think he'll cover that compared to everybody being, else. In the I, NFL. I think you're being very kind. I don't think a lot of people are going to agree with you, but I, 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 I'm fine with your thought that that's that that's fine. I, I, I even think that's possible. I don't think I, people I think are going to be happy with thumbs that. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs down. It's thumbs up for me. I'm not going thumbs down or I'm not going neutral. I'm going thumbs up. Is it, oh, my God, he's in the MVP conversation? Of course not with 1,500 total yards. But I'm trying to be fair about that. I go, I think he's going to rush for 1,500 and catch it for 700, John. 2,200 yards total. I could throw on my Eagles. Uh, sunglasses. Well, I'm not asking you to do that. Numbers. I'm asking for your honest opinion. I gave and, you my honest opinion, and, and I will and give it a thumbs up afterwards. Is that special? Ooh, now we got to use Howie's word. Um, that's Howie's word. That ain't my word. Yeah, he did. He set the bar higher. Um, it's borderline special. It's not not 100 for special. Yeah, and everybody's yeah. going to define Howie's word the way they want to, including Howie himself. All right. We need Tommy Lawler's definition on the Eagles for the upcoming season. Uh, he joins us next. Tommy Lawler here on Birds 365. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker, Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was gonna be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was gonna be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was gonna be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online.
Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Mega Mac here on Bird 365, and there's our guy, Tommy Lawler from EaglesBlitz.com, longtime Eagle Beat reporter uh, with his own website now. I was reading EaglesBlitz.com right before I came on today, and Tommy's already got his uh, opinions on Howie Roseman and his comments yesterday up on his website. You need to check it out, I-G-G-L-E-S, EaglesBlitz.com. Tommy, Saquon Barkley, you're, he, Tommy always gets on early. You got to love him. Uh, so he sat there for the last 15 minutes while me and McCoy. Yeah, I apologize, but, Tommy. As as do I. Sorry about Who that. Who wouldn't want to listen to two grumpy old men yell at each yeah. other? Yeah. are like, oh. uh, About uh, the bell cow backs. What do you think about Saquon Barkley? What is, what is that number? We're trying to put it in some kind of an understandable number of overall production. That Barkley would need to achieve. First of all, do you agree? Does it have to just be rushing yards or could it be rushing and passing yards combined? What's the number you'll use to determine? Yes, yeah, Saquon Barkley is special. Harry Roseman called him special at the owners' meetings. What is his production going to look, got to look like for him to be special in your eyes? Well, I'm going to make my prediction and say he's the first guy in NFL history. To go 2,000 yards on the ground and 2,000 in the air. Yeah, yeah. that's special. You know. Now that is oh my special. God. It, so it, that, that's and, and, and you ditched that eagle pom-pom so quickly. <laughs> I never even saw it. You hit that well, yeah. mister. That, so, that I would I would tip my hat and say the Eagles are correct. He is yeah, special. I, I, that would be wild. Um, so I think one of the things that you, go, you guys both kind of missed is you're, you're talking about his yards. I think – the, the one thing with Barkley is you're going to see an impact on how he affects other players. And if you think about the beginning of last year, defenses did not pay attention to DeAndre Swift. They focused on shutting down Jalen Hurts. And if you remember that Minnesota game, I think DeAndre ran for like 175 yards. Yeah. And you would watch plays where they're just there were just huge gaps and easy space for him to run. And any player could have run in those gaps defenses are going to have to look at Saquon Barkley and say, he is a weapon. He's a guy we have to account for. We can't just hope that we're going to stop him. So there's going to be an effect that he's going to have. That's going to, that'll, that'll boost the yardage for the receivers. It'll help Jalen hurts as a runner. And it's, it's hard to predict numbers. Exactly. Um, you know, I think he's going to probably run somewhere in the 1200 yard range as for receiving. Uh, I don't know a specific number. John's exactly right that the Eagles don't throw to the running backs. I do think they'll they'll do it more with him, but I don't know that it'll be volume, but I think there'll be the potential for impact plays. If you watch him as a giant, go back to his days with Penn State, watch him on the wheel route. All of a sudden, he's a guy that can get down the field and create separation from a linebacker, maybe even a safety on the wheel route. That's just what happened in the last couple of years with Miles and DeAndre. And so all of a sudden, you could throw the ball vertically to him where you may be getting a 20 or 30 yard chunk play. And, and so again, there may not be volume. There may not be 60 catches or 70 catches, whatever, but you may get some impact plays. And we all know Nick Sirianni, he's talked about his offense. He's always talked about wanting chunk plays. Barkley gives them a guy who can deliver chunk plays as both a runner and a receiver. Yeah. And I did, I don't know when he popped into the green room, but my actual thought, Tommy, is it's very esoteric. And I, I mentioned that word with Saquon Barkley. It's got to be the presence. But I'm also realistic, and people judge by numbers. Sure. And the Eagles' numbers in the backfield over the past two years are pretty stinking impressive with above-average players. So to me, that complicates things even more because I think your 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 assessment is correct in that it's about his presence more than the numbers, but – Again, that's esoteric, and that's not necessarily you can point to this. You can point to that. If he's creating space, like Nick Sirianni used to say about Jody's favorite player, Quez Watkins, you know, is anyone going to mention that because A.J. Brown makes a big play? So our buddy Jimmy Kemsky said it best. I'll, I'll read what Jimmy said. Is Barkley special? That's Howie's word, not my word. 
The Eagles say he is. We'll see. If so, it'll be worth the money he got. If not, he won't. Hashtag analysis. That's what it comes down to. Is he special? Does he make a difference? Nick Sirianni at the coach's breakfast this morning is already talking about he's like A.J. Brown. A.J. Mm -hmm. stinking special. This is the bar the Eagles are creating. Not me. And that's a very, very high bar. Right. If they're right, it's great. Listen, I, I can only tell you, I watched the guy throughout his career at Penn State, and he was absolutely a dynamic player in college. I've watched him throughout his career with the Giants. And I'll tell you, as somebody who's sitting there watching a game where he's playing against uh, the, the Eagles, every time he touches the ball, you're nervous. You know, because he's got that ability to break a tackle or if they if the Giants, God forbid, actually blocked well on a given play and he had room to run, could turn that into a big play. So I think he's got big time potential. And if you could study and I don't know the numbers right offhand, I haven't had a chance to look it up yet. Uh, yards before contact, the Eagles are amongst the league leaders every year. So the runners have space to get to the the line of scrimmage, the second level, before they have to deal with a defender, I would think that Barkley is nowhere close to that because the Giants had mediocre to bad offensive lines throughout his time in New York. And all of a sudden now he's going to have good blocking. Now, the first couple of times, who knows, maybe he'll freak out and he won't know what to do. <laughs> Backfield, you might, you might, you might. Well, he has. I mean, that, that part's fair. He, uh, he said, been very poor supporting cast. No question about that. He'll have a better supporting cast here. You're going to have great uh, receivers. Uh, mm -hmm. Still good offensive line. We'll see how good without Jason Kelsey. But it's still going to be top five, I, I would think, bare minimum. Uh, it's still going to be a very good offensive line. You got weapons all over the place. You got a good quarterback who's a plus one. So even that helps the running back even more. There are no excuses. No. So, um, well, listen, it, it's a risky move. There's no question. But it, in reality, just about every move in free agency is a risk, right? Yeah. Uh, you have to take chances. And I think what the Eagles saw was, hey, listen, here's a guy that does have, in their mind, special potential. I, I think you could just physically, when you watch him, his speed, his size, he's a heavy back. He's a powerful back. He can break tackles his ability to catch the ball in the backfield, whether he has special production is yet to be seen, but I do think he has special ability and they're saying, let's take a chance on this guy with special ability. If we put him in our offense with the good blocking, the good players around him and a team that's probably going to play with the lead a decent amount of the time, it gives us the ability to dictate the offense is what we wanted. Our defense is what we want to do. And th these will all be things that, that Barkley's not had. And, uh, to me, he's a guy worth taking a chance on because they didn't have to trade for him. They didn't have to give up a second or third round pick and a contract. They just had to give him some money. And you say, yeah, they paid him a little bit more, but I think Swift got like eight million bucks a year. Right. Yeah. Right. So he's yeah. four and a half. And we know the salary cap went higher than expected. Right. So it's almost like the Eagles took that extra money, said, let's throw that at, at Barkley. And we're essentially getting the same thing if we had kept Swift for eight million bucks a year. But we've got a guy that we think could be an even better player than DeAndre Swift. And he'll be given a chance to show that next year. All right, one more quasi-Saquon question, then we'll move on. He's the uh, second highest paid back after only McCaffrey in the league. Um, there, there are a couple other guys that are close. Again, contracts, it depends on what you look at, what you put the value on. Uh, there are other guys who are very comparable to him. Um, I think it's just a two-year deal at most, and it could even be a one-year deal. So those who lean heavily on the money aspect of it, all right, if that's the case, Tommy Lawler, if they could have gotten another running back for half the price, and because it's the Eagles and it's their system, it's their offensive line, it's A.J. and Devontae, anybody could step in and get a 1,000 yards, and you could pay them uh, half of what you pay Saquon. Who'd they miss out on? Because it's a capped league. The cap went up, but it went up for everybody. So everybody got that same extra built-in viability. Is there a free agent this offseason where you say, damn, if the Eagles had been able to get to that number, he might have come here because we're an actual Super Bowl contender rather than going to a middling team or something like that. Was there a guy, a specific individual that you go, yeah, that's where the Eagles. If the Eagles made 
an exception for Saquon Barkley. Was there a player out there you would have preferred them make an exception for and land as a free agent this offseason? I can't really think of anybody. Me uh, neither. That's why I'm uh, on the I know mine. Train. You know mine. Now they would have had it. The timing didn't work out. They would have had to wait. But for one year, and you want a player who can impact in the ground game and the receiving, Aaron Jones. Aaron mm. Jones. Yeah. One year. Although, it, listen, only if he gets to play Dallas about 10 times a year. That you know? Well, <laughs> if, it, it, if you look at Aaron he Jones. Dallas twice. I mean, he, he and he, the ironic part, he was the best running back in football down the stretch last year and in the playoffs. As you mentioned, he single-handedly destroyed the Cowboys. Um, he he was hurt at the beginning of the season and only played at the end of the season. Plus, he's 29, so that impacts. But he's been consistently great catching the football over years and years and years and years. You talk about wheel routes, Tommy. That guy's got wheel routes all over the place, making great catches, dominating against linebackers at 16 touchdowns one year, consistent 1,000-yard guy. Now he had a better supporting cast. That's fair to point out. But we're talking about 5.5 yards per carry, 4.6, 5.3. That guy, for one year, $7 million bucks. I think he got. Yeah, I, I I would have rolled the dice there. On I I think you have a a more impactful player, and you don't have to worry about him as much as more because he doesn't have the reputation. Uh, the, the only thing about Aaron Jones, so the the fact the Packers let him walk, you're a little curious about that because he seemed like a, such a good fit there, right? Um, it, it when I I haven't studied his numbers, or whatever, but when I think of Aaron Jones, I think of a player who's a little bit erratic, where he has games where he's phenomenal. And you, we see him against Dallas. He just play. He runs for 160, 170 yards. He does crazy things, and you just think, God, what a player! And then he'll have some other games where he's very human. And so it's, I would say he's a little bit of a boomer bust guy. Now you know the numbers you gave are good numbers, but you know, is he one of those guys? Can he be consistent week to week, or is he a little bit hot and cold depending on who he's playing? So that's the only thing I would say there. But the Eagles really l- listen. It, there wasn't a, um, a a great linebacker to be had. You know, you could go for Patrick Queen, but you're going to pay him big money. And there was the question of, was he worth it? Because he only got good in Baltimore when Roquan Smith came with him. So now that you're now that he's on his That's own, you sit there and say, yeah. is, is that a guy I want to invest a bunch of money and take a chance? Because the Patrick Queen before Roquan Smith was a, a mediocre player. Yeah. And so it would have been nice if they could have had a, a better solution, a linebacker but there just weren't great options. And so I think going with Devin white is, is fine with me. There's risk in that, but again, he's a talented player. So spending the money on Barkley, listen, we know how he he's talked about this. He goes, if you ever, if you try to balance out your offense and defense and try to make this move and that move, you're going to do yourself a disservice. What you have to do is figure out where can you make yourself a really, really good team and focus on that side of the ball. The Eagles, obviously, because of Hurts and A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, the offensive line, the offense is clearly the better unit. So they got a guy with that dynamic potential to add to that offense to make it a great offense in their mind. And the defense is not going to be a great defense. There's no question about that. So they're going to kind of patch that thing together and hope that the defense can be good enough to match with a great offense and that can get them back into title contention. Yeah, and I I just looked it up. I didn't realize. Aaron Jones had less than 900 yards from the line of scrimmage last year. Yeah, he played I, 11 games, Jody. I understand that. But uh, do we not look at him as a guy with tread off the tire? He's oh, a yeah. Year older. He's, he's, play, he's, he's two years older, and he's played one more year in the league. If we're worried about Saquon Barkley because there's a lot of tread off that tire. Why would we just easily accept Aaron Jones and think he's going to be great? Well, A, because I said it's for a year and it's for half the money. And and Barkley's too. No, but it's for half the money. It's a year. And plus, again, you're talking about, yes, he's older, but he actually has less touches in his career uh, than Saquon Barkley. Um, He's he's under 1,500. Saquon's right at 1,500. He's about 1,300. 1350. Um, 
He's been more impactful. Now he's had, he's played on better teams. His yards per carry is outrageous. His receiving ability is outrageous. I said for one year, if you think you're a Super Bowl contender and you watched him in the playoffs and down the stretch last year, he was the best running back in football. And I, I criticized Green Bay because they're going out and paying big money to Josh Jacobs. And Josh Jacobs had a terrible year last year. And, and they just watched the guy lift them, turn, lift them farther in the playoffs than anybody thought they could be. Dallas didn't lose in the regular season at home. They destroyed them at AT&T Stadium on, on the shoulders of Aaron Jones. He made Jordan Love. Everybody thinks Jordan Love's a superstar. Part of that is because Aaron Jones made him look like a superstar. I've said for one year, you asked the question, that's my guy. If I'm trying to get to the Super Bowl, that's my guy. All right, one so year. I, I, I'm going to ask this of Tommy. I'll give you Aaron Jones and 300 yards total from the line of scrimmage next year versus Saquon Barkley. Who are you taking? Um, where did Aaron Jones go to again? I'm drawing a place at Houston. Went to the Vikings. Signed with the Vikings after the Packers cut him after they picked up uh, Josh Jacobs. So he signs with Minnesota. I'll give you plus 300 yards. Barkley outgains him from the line of scrimmage by 300 yards. Who do you want, Aaron Jones or Saquon Barkley? Yeah, well, with the 300 yards, I'll probably take Jones, but there's I'd no question Barkley. in my mind Barkley's the better player. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, listen, I, I think I think the Eagles made a good move in getting Barkley. Uh, Jones, it'll be interesting to see how he does in Minnesota. We don't, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, who's you know, Sam Darnold's the quarterback? If it, yeah, it, it, if it were Kirk Cousins, a healthy Kirk Cousins in 17 games, that's an easy bet, but it's not. I mean, we just talked about we're making excuses for Saquon Barkley for supporting Cass. You know, Sam yeah, Darnold. If Aaron, Sam Darnold Jones is going to have J.J. McCarthy, who some people think is the next coming of Tom Brady. Out of Michigan. I, hey, yeah. Aaron Jones I mean, could go for 2,000 yards. I, 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 if if J.J. McCarthy's the next Tom Brady, Aaron Jones should go for 2,000 yards. I find it funny when people talk about supporting Cass when they want to talk about supporting Cass, but don't talk about supporting Cass when they don't want to talk well, about but supporting didn't, didn't Aaron well, but I, Jones have a very good Jordan Love last year as to as compared to Tommy Cutlets of the well, Giants? Even, Do I talk even, supporting Cass? Who had the better supporting Cass last year? Okay. Say Barkley, Aaron Jones. Oh, Did no. Aaron Jones' uh, team no not doubt. help raise his game? No doubt, Jody, but how are you not seeing? Then you're ignoring, oh, Saquon Barkley's going to be with Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown in that offensive line, and Aaron Jones is going to be with Sam Darnold in a goofy offensive line that they haven't fixed in a decade, and now it doesn't matter. Now it's, oh, uh, 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 that's his problem. I, John, that's I all understand. I'm trying to point out. And I'm trying to point out that you're giving, you're not leaning enough on Aaron Jones' success last year being because he was on a good team as compared to Saquon Barkley, who didn't have a stellar statistical year because he was on a very bad team. Well, I think we all saw the Packers down the stretch and in the playoffs. Are, are we, is anybody saying he didn't play well down no. the stretch and in the no, playoffs? No, of mean, course not. He was I, huge. I, I, in I there. mean, the guy played the way he played. That's Let's he vanquished the Dallas Cowboys. It should be the NFL MVP as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tommy, here's a word that Howie used yesterday that I, I was questioning. Bring him back, CJGJ, because I think 98% of Eagle fans like it, as they should. He does bring ball hawking skills back. He does bring attitude back. Howie talked a lot about that. He also said toughness. Is CJGJ a tough player? Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's not really? Brian Dawkins, rugged, that kind of guy. But he's a physical player. If you go back and rewatch the Super Bowl, which we can debate whether that's a healthy thing or not, uh, he played with a lot of attitude. You know, he was very physical and, and, and did his part. He played really hard in that game. And you see that effort and that there's some toughness that goes into effort. And uh, if you watch the Eagles defense last year, and I would question whether that's healthy to do. Uh, they were charm and soft with Bradley Roby and James Bradbury. Those guys, those, those guys would have been considered soft if they were playing flag football last year. Uh, and so you get a guy like CJ GJ 
he'll hit, he'll tackle. Again, he's not going to be a Brian Dawkins or Andre Waters just destroying guys over the middle, but he's physical. He tackles. He's aggressive, and that kind of toughness, there, there's value in that. And again, his playmaking ability, that's that's really, uh, you, you know, you could go get a safety who's bigger and more physical, but you want a guy who's going to go get you some turnovers, some takeaways, and that's that's what he can do with his playmaking ability. That, that's been true going back to New Orleans and even when he was at the University of Florida. So he brings you a combination of skills, and the Eagles secondary desperately needed that last year and will benefit from it this upcoming season. And by the way, Tommy, why would you even want a safety like Brian Dawkins in the hip drop environments of the NFL? I mean, we're going to get five 15 yard penalties each game uh, to have a physical safety. Like, so you got to play under the rules that they put on you. And I think, I think CJ Gardner Johnson is everything the Eagles say is as far as setting that energy. I love that signing. And, and the numbers are out, by the way, the cap numbers, 2024, 2.6 million, 2025, 4 million, 2026, 5.1 million. Um, of course, void years, 27, 2027 to 2030 to help that out. Um, I love that signing. I mean, I'm a, I'm all on board with C.J. Gardner-Johnson in this era because he's a playmaker. Now, I am concerned injury-prone. We just kicked Devontae Maddox out the door uh, because he's injury-prone. When C.J. was here, lacerated kidney, missed five games, um, tore his pack, I believe, in week two or week three in Detroit. I am concerned about the way he plays and the physicality and his body type, similar to Avante Maddox. What, you know, Eagles fans used to bother me, Tommy, when they would say, Avante Maddox is made out of glass. You probably get those comments as well. I'm like, he is a tough dude who's 5'9, 185, and he's playing like he's 210, and that's the reason he gets hurt. I get similar vibes to CJ. Is that, uh, do you see a little bit of that? I think CJ has been a little bit more durable than Avante. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, Avante, Avante was a tough guy when he was. Yeah. A kid, that, there's, I, I had him pegged as an Eagles target because I thought Jim Schwartz would absolutely love him because of how hard he played, how aggressive and tough he was. And it was great at Pitt. You know, it was great. And he got to the NFL where he's no longer hitting boys. He's hitting men. And his body all of a sudden hitting, you know, 190 pound wide receivers or 210 pound running backs. He's hitting Derrick Henry. He's hitting 260 pound tight ends. He's hitting receivers that are 225. And all of a sudden his body couldn't handle that. Right. He had, I think one season where he played like 16 games, but he's had a bunch of, of seasons where he missed a handful of games here, or there. And listen, he got hurt because he was tough. He, he, played, he yeah, played bigger than he exactly. was. So yeah. give him credit for, for being that kind of a player. It's unfortunate because, you know, you, you can't count on him. So I think the Eagles did the right thing in moving away from him. There's risk with CJGJ, no question about that. Um, but I think that be because of the production he has, where Avante always showed his flashes, CJGJ, what do you have, six interceptions in 2022? Led well, the NFL, missed right. five games. Yeah, and, and so he's had that potential where he was a game changer. And we never saw Avante be a game changer on a regular basis. So if you're going to take a, 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 a chance on injury history, you take it with a game changer as opposed to the guy who's a solid player. And so that's what they're doing there. But, um, yeah, it, it is interesting that, you know, the Eagles, I'm a little curious what's going on with depth at safety because Reed <laughs> Blankenship in his two years has, had, has missed games, right? Yeah. And C, uh, Chauncey has missed games. Sydney so, tore, torn ACL. Um, yeah, in week that's right. 18. Right uh, now, you sit there and say, I don't know if Makai Garner is penciled in as a safety for sure. And if not, you got what, Tristan McCollum? Uh, so they, they, well, a lot of people brought up Justin Simmons, and the Eagles should double down at safety with CJ and Justin Simmons. I, I don't. I, I kind of like Reed Blankenship as a prospect. I kind of like, I hear what you're saying injury-wise, but I kind of like Sidney Brown as a prospect, and he'll be back. He's young. It's a nine-month injury, not a 12-month injury any longer. Um, he'll be back early in the season. 
it is a difficult question because you consider yourself a Super Bowl contender, and obviously Justin Simmons is a great player, older. And then you're trying to serve two masters with younger guys who might develop. Where are you in that sort of tightrope? I I believe in focusing on the younger guys, and I, I think Howie's been smart this year to sign guys that are almost exclusively in their prime. Uh, Devontae Parker's in his 30s, and I think one of their player might be 29, but most of the other guys are 25, 26, 27. And listen, last year they, they signed some guys that were in that age range, and then once the season started, they loaded up on older guys. And we just saw, you know, Bradley Roby was not good. Uh, we saw Shaq Leonard had his struggles. Uh, Julio Jones was, what, 35 and looked like he was 35. Yeah, yeah. And th- they just had all these older guys, and it just didn't go well. And I think that the Eagles need to build for a two- or three-year run and not a one-year run. Last year, it felt like they were focused on 2023. Now it looks like they're focused on 2024 and 2025. So go with the young guys, you know, and, and just have a plan at safety. That, okay, we got CJGJ, we got Reed Blankenship. Sidney Brown will be back by, let's say, Thanksgiving or something like that. So, you you know, you get at least a third of the season out of him. But you need some other stuff there. Maybe Makai Garner, you, listen, he showed some flashes. If you think he's a safety, then, okay, maybe you're you're better off there than I'm saying. You know, it, it's just yeah. the Eagles are so noncommittal. Even this morning, Nick Sirianni, which, God love me, I, I get that he's, he's paranoid looking for advantages. But he doesn't want to say, oh, Cam Jurgens is going to be our center. It's like, come on, man. Yeah, can I you, know. Can you, not just... you know, the, the ironic thing is he said at the NFL media the day before he had Cam. He talked like Cam was the center. I, I don't get Nick. I don't get Nick at times. He's I, I get all coaches want every advantage possible, but at a certain point you go, he's gonna be your center, you know? Yeah. Unless, unless they draft Jackson Powers Johnson in the first round and make him the center. Well, they wouldn't call him the uh right guard last year for a long time until he and showed it's... up one day. And said, "Why do you keep asking me? He's obviously he's the only guy who's taking rep. We <laughs> keep asking you because you wouldn't admit you wouldn't it. That's it. why. Idiot. Well, no, I, I get that you do want you do want competition. You want players to they have to earn positions, and I, I I do understand that. But sometimes it's it's obvious what's going to happen. And Nick's just like he loves to say, listen, I don't have to make a decision until September sixth or whenever opening day is.' And you go, come on, man, yeah, I, you don't yeah. want to. I don't expect you to give me the playbook. I don't need to know what the first five plays are going to be." but can you just go ahead and tell me something that we're 90% sure of to start with? Are you really getting an advantage on whoever the Eagles are going to play opening day by not saying? I think so. All right, Tommy, Tommy, since uh, we just got your opinion on the Eagles and how they should be handling it and your uh, propensity to look toward youth, what day is Hassan Reddick going to get cut? Never. They got to run him off the team. He's 30 years old. Come on. You just said Eagles have to go young. They, they got all these old guys off the scrap heap last year, and that's why they fell apart. Well, Hassan Reddick's 30. You got to run his ass out of town. If you're going young, if the Eagles have to be looking at a two- or three-year picture, then you got to get rid of Hassan Reddick, right? Well, he's not Jody McDonald old, so let's, you know, he, he's still got a little bit left in the tank. Uh, right. Yeah, they're, listen, they're trying to trade him. There's no so, question. So Hassan's 30. Simmons is 31. Simmons is too old to think about signing because you don't want to keep three blanket chip on the bench. But as son Reddick, you're ready to bring back and hopefully have him get 12 sacks. I didn't know that 12 month difference was the world. No, no. Reddick's going to get traded. I mean, it, listen, it's a, that's what they want to do. That's what he, he wants more money and the Eagles don't want to pay him any more money. And we know they've already loaded up on Bryce Huff. They, they work things out with Josh Sweat. They've got Brandon Graham coming back. They've got Nolan Smith coming back. They added Zach Ball. And so they got a bunch of edge rushers. Uh, I think they're ready to move on from, from Hassan. Uh, you know, listen, he wants more money, and they understand that. It's a business. He thinks yeah. he's outplayed his contract. He wants more money while, while he can get it. So uh, hopefully they'll work out a trade, get a, get a decent draft pick for him, let him go somewhere. Somebody gives him a new deal. He gets the money he wants, and the Eagles – have a younger set of, of pass rushers and uh, we'll see if they're, they can be as productive. Uh, there's definitely a risk there. Yeah. Uh, at Lawler NFL, I want to apologize to Tommy again. He had to listen to the two Muppets arguing <laughs> in the, uh, uh, what do you call that? In the theater, uh, the, the box, the, the opera theater. box. Yeah. Yeah. The opera the box. Value. Thank you. Eagle Eagles blitz.com. Make sure you, uh, follow Tommy there. Does a tremendous job. 
You brought up Zach Bond a little bit there. I didn't know if you heard us before we got into the Saquon discussion. I, I did. Every once in a while, how he serves up an unforced error might be the quarterback factory. Mm. I think he did that with Zach Bond, comparing him to Andrew Van Ginkle for a couple reasons. One, Van Ginkle's going to play. Bond isn't. So why are you putting those expectations on him? Um I don't know. It bothered me a little bit. It, it's a little thing, but every once in a while he does something like that. I'm like, why? Why do that? Why so do you that say he's thing? not going to play, but let's think about this now. The Eagles added three players on the first day of free agency. Saquon Barkley, Bryce Huff, and Zach Yeah, Baldwin. they definitely targeted him. Right? They wanted him. Yeah, This is a guy they wanted. They went aggressively yeah. after and yeah. uh, I think, you know, we, we talk money's always a key. I heard you guys say, why didn't he just go get Van Ginkle? Well, they got the cheaper version, right? So if they're going to get Barkley, then they pass on a Van Ginkle and go get Zach Bond, and, and they try to see, hey, can and listen, Van Ginkle is going to be a starter. You know, he started 11 games last year. Yeah, uh, Bond is, is going to be a guy who's going to be a rotational player. Uh, he's a good fit for Fangio's defense as a guy who can set the edge. He can rush the passer. And then if you put him in an inside linebacker, you know, he's got some potential to play there. He's a good blitzer. So he's a guy that can move around, do some different things. But with barring injury, Tommy, where is he going to play? I mean, you just well, re- you you just ran the litany of edge rushers. Mm-hmm. Even if Hassan isn't here, you still have to get uh, – it's going to be Bryce Hupp. It's going to be Josh Sweat. It's going to be Nolan Smith. It's going to be BG. He could be the pit guy there. If Hassan goes, if if Hassan doesn't go, he's the sixth guy. And then all ball linebacker, yes, lack depth. But if N'Kobe Dean's healthy, he's playing. If Devin White's healthy, he's playing until he gets benched for ineffectiveness. Um, Where is he playing? That's my concern. No, I hear you. And it's a legitimate concern. I think what it is, I think you're going to see them really get back to rotating guys where last year they got away from that a little bit and if you go back to 2022 they did more rotating kept everybody fresh limited snaps and the production was good last year they they did not rotate guys nearly as much and i think guys wore down as the season went on uh, i think they're going to rotate guys and the other thing is brandon graham last year played more uh in nickel looks in on the inside as a pass rusher so you know, if you're giving him some snaps there, you can put a guy like Zach Bond on the outside and have him and Nolan Smith as the backup edge rushers to huff and sweat. And then have, you know, Graham as inside and outside. So there's reps to be had if you move guys around because we know the best inside rusher in recent years has been uh, 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 Fletcher Cox. Right, he's, gone, he's no longer right? there. So they're going to need to be creative with how they get inside rushes. Maybe they put Josh Sweat inside some. So... I think, listen, they've got probably more guys than snaps. It's going to be awkward. It's never going to be a healthy fit there because you're always either going to have too many snaps for certain guys or not enough snaps. It's hard to get it just right. But uh, but I think that they've got – you'd rather have too many players than not enough players. We've all seen some Eagles defenses that were thin at defensive end and were painful to watch, and so they're not going through that. And – if, if Nolan Smith turns out to be the guy they think, then he plays more, and so be it. If he doesn't pan out as expected, then you got Ball in there to compete. You've got Brandon Graham there. you got Sweat. Uh, and, of course, we'll see what happens with Huff. So it's going to be wild. And, and uh, if they do, if Reddick, they can't get a good deal for him and keep him, then things get kind of crazy because not everybody can be active on game day, and that gets really complicated. So, again, that ties back into why – Moving Reddick would make a lot of sense. Get an asset back, free up some reps, go younger, and you're kind of making a two or three year decision there. If you were making it for one game, you'd want Reddick for the game, but again, you're always kind of thinking down the road as well. And because of age, I would say Legereus Need is a more viable star than Hassan Reddick right now. Not saying he's a better or had a better year left. Because of his age, I would say he's a more viable player on the open market. He got a third. They got a future third for him. So good luck getting a good pick for Hassan Reddick. I just don't think it's going to be out there, Tommy. Uh, it might not. That's And then, then it gets even more debatable and fun. 
T. Lawler, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Everybody should check out his website if you're any kind of an Eagles fan. Eagles, I-G-G-L-E-S, blitz.com. Tommy, thanks for jumping in. We'll get you back up in a couple of weeks shortly before the draft, brother, okay? Sounds good. You guys take take it easy. and Don't, don't go too hard on each other. Yeah, let's, let, let, let's not let Saquon divide us now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's all on Saquon. It's Saquon's fault. <laughs> He's uh, special. He's special. So it's Tommy Lawley. Tommy nice, Lawley. Tommy. Is, You're I'm special. Tommy's special. He is very special. All right. McDonald McMullen here with you on Bird Street 65. Birds fans, have I got a deal for you? Right now, here is your chance to save upwards, upwards of 40% on your car insurance. And you can do it with one of Jacob Sports' great partners. Here's what you need to do. Call one of their two managing general partners, either Jim or Fran, and tell them you're a friend of both Jacob Sports and Birds 365. Hi, I'm Jim Muehlbronner, Managing Partner at DelVal Insurance Group. Give us a call. We're a local, knowledgeable agency, not an 800 number. Go Birds! Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. I look up and I notice my partner's not there. What happened to Johnny Mac? I guess his feed dropped. We'll see if we can get him 
back up at some point. I didn't even realize it. Just sitting here looking at some notes from the show. Uh, coming up in less than 10 minutes, we'll punch up Glenn Mack now, the host of the Eagle pregame show on their radio network, which is WIP here in Philadelphia, but uh, all over the country, they got the radio network and a uh, guy who's kind of uh, unfortunately burdened by having to work with me on Sunday, so WIP. Uh, so we'll get Glenn up here in, in less than 10 minutes and hopefully get Johnny Mack back. I'm not sure exactly where Johnny Mack went to. Um, here was one thing I was going to run by Jay Mack. And uh, it's good news for the Eagles fan. It's potential good news, I should say. It's my estimation that it's good news. We'll see if it actually turns out that way. Um, we bring him up from time to time. We should probably bring him up more often than we do because at least on paper, it looks like um, he is potentially going to be a, a, a contributor for the Eagles in 2024. And that's Isaiah Rogers, the cornerback that they picked up when he was put on waivers by the Colts suspended for the entire year because of gambling suspension. And as of the end of the Super Bowl, when the final game was played, he could um, opt back in. He could ask permission to be reinstated. I have not heard anything about him actually asking for reinstatement. And there surely has been no comment from the league about when or if they will reinstate him. Most people, yours truly very much included, believe it'll happen. It's going to happen. It should happen. Uh, I think it should, like, happen now. And there has been no official statement on when that's going to happen. Here's good news, Eagle fans. If you're looking forward to getting Isaiah Rogers back and, and in as part of the mix of the Philadelphia Eagles, the gambling issue that he had, he explained afterward. Now, you can take it with a grain of salt if you want. I don't know about you, but listening to the interpreter relay what Shohei Otani had to say yesterday, I took a little bit of that with a grain of salt. Now, Shohei, to his credit, he doubled down. He got robbed. The money was stolen. He had no idea. He didn't give it to Epe, his interpreter, to pay off his debts. He didn't know what his debts were all about. He didn't even know he had debts. You believe Shohei or you don't. Um, you either believe Isaiah Rogers or you don't. He said he was just helping out a couple of buddies who lived in a state that didn't have legalized gambling. So he wanted to give them uh, uh, a helping hand. You can believe it or not believe it, but that's what he has said. Um, hey, you got the Otani mess in baseball. And did you hear about this story? Uh, good thing we got Johnny Mack back. Um, did you hear this story about the Toronto Raptors player, uh, Jante Parker, Johnny Mac? I did see the gambling-related aspect to it. I didn't really delve yeah, into I, it. Yeah, I'll give you the broad brush strokes. In two games within the last several weeks, he he's a role player, comes off the bench. He, he contributes for them, but he's not one of their star players, and their star players really aren't star players anymore. They've traded <laughs> off their star <laughs> players. Um, <laughs> But he's actually getting a chance to play. In one game, he supposedly scratched his eye, and he came out of the game, and he never went back in. In another game, he started, played the first three minutes, and then pulled himself out and said he was sick. And he went to the locker room. And maybe he did or didn't have uh, issues or whatever. Never came back in the game again. And in those games... There was specifically heavy money bet on him on Ooh. his player props, not on the Raptors, on his individual player props. He's enough of a rotational guy that a lot of betting outlets were using him as a guy they put props out on. And in both of the games that he left early, the player props yeah, were man. bigger to begin with sure. and just money continued to come in thereafter. So that's a real country. You talk about Isaiah right and the kind of money he was betting, whatever. None of it has ever been tied to him specifically performing or not performing within a game to have an impact on the outcome of the game. This is what they're saying about this Raptors player. And if it if they get to the bottom and they find out that's the case, that's a serious black guy. That's yeah. worse than Otani. It's worse than Isaiah. The NBA is looking at a bigger controversy than uh, the, the Eagles are looking at with their returning player, 
So if you're an Eagle fan, you're going, hey, he did next to nothing. Get him reinstated right here, right now. Get him in at our uh, corner slot position because we need him back. Yeah, man, this this is going to uh, – we know the Otani situation, as you mentioned. You bring up that. You, uh, I brought up gambling when it came to the hip drop tackling. You know, when you when you insert sort of overly legislative rules, there's easy ways of, hey, throw a flag. That's That looks like it. You get 15 yards, you can uh, really – affect the impact of a game i think this is going to be huge across all the sports i mean unfortunately you know people say well you know quarterbacks make this kind of money big time players make this look at otani who makes more money than otani hopefully he's not involved i got questions about that um it's bad jody uh, 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 you know i and i don't know how you deal with it i really don't uh, it's so easy to do. Um, pick up your phone, but when you're when you're a player and you're sitting out games specifically because of player props, boy, yeah. And the NBA has already been through this with Tim Donnie. Netflix is doing a a documentary that's coming out soon on Tim Tim Donnie, um, the official who was fixing games. It, it, you know it's a concern. Let's put it that way. It is. And the only reason I brought it up was to try and lessen the concern for the Eagles because they might actually get a player back because of it. Cause other sports have bigger fish to fry. Temple basketball. I, 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 where's that going locally? That, and that went, that was so weird because it looked God awful. And then they turned around and started playing well. And all of a sudden they were in their tournament final and almost made the big dance. So, yeah. There's... yeah what was that? That I believe it was UAB. Uh, it was flagged for suspicious gambling. Uh, I don't know how it's going to work out, but um, I don't know. It's, 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 it's getting ugly out there. I will say well, that. And as a guy who's been known to gamble a little bit, and I have my uh, gambling outlet at Parks that I use, um, you got to be happy about the fact that they are taking steps to make sure this doesn't happen, that they are monitoring this stuff very closely, and it is getting out when there are questionable patterns of wagering and like. Because if you're a guy who likes a bet, if you've got a uh, sports bet app and you like playing, you want to know you're getting a fair shake. And if there are certain teams, individuals that are uh, not giving you best effort and or trying to have specific things go one way, so they can win a bet, it screws you. And you get, I don't know about you, but I'd get tremendously ticked off. At least the places that are uh, out there and out front with it have been very forthcoming that they're keeping a close eye on this, which it should give you a comfort if you are someone that likes to wager. All right, he's J-Mac. I'm J-Mac. We need a G-Mac in the mix. We're going to go to Glenn McLeod, the host of the Eagles pregame show on the radio network, host on WIP, and Porsche Chinook that's got to work with me on Sundays. G-Mac, Glenn McLeod next here on Birds 365. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222.
field of life, First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech, we offer three major services, the first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Appreciate you streaming in here on Birds 365. You got Mac McMullen, Mac McDonald. We got the Mac man. Oh, no, he disappeared. Damn, I looked up and he was gone. We're, I guess, having some internet slash connection issues today because Johnny Mac disappeared for five minutes. And Glenn Mac now, much like Tommy Lawler, logged in like 10 minutes ahead of time. We're trying to try and get probably him. Yeah, it's probably mad. But I had my own technical difficulties, so maybe it's one of those days. Um, and by the way, when I was gone working on that, I got a blue screen of death, uh, but luckily I'm back. Um, the NFL uh, passed the kickoff, the new kickoff rule, so we are going to have uh, uh, kickoffs back in the equation. So maybe that'll be a little bit more entertaining as they take away hip drop swivel tackles. Which supposedly was not the case, at least as per uh, Florio, I read on Pro Football Talk last night, uh, that they had had like a straw vote yesterday. Yeah. I like an official vote. Just uh, what what do you think, guys? And those who were in favor of it had to do exactly as you said, Florio said, arm twisting last night at an NFL function. And apparently they got uh, three quarters of the vote to be able to put it in. I don't know if I'm good with it or not because I, I I didn't see enough XFL. Uh, I think you'll I think you'll enjoy it. I, I you know why I think I, I might think it. it's like one of the greatest things in the last ten years in the NFL, or it could be a massive mistake. I I don't I don't know. I I I can read about it and I still don't even understand all the explanation. I got to see it with my own two eyes. I'm glad that they're doing. It. If you say yay or nay, are you glad that they did it? It's got to be a yay because. The game was lacking. The fact yes. that they took it out wasn't good. So I'm willing to give anything a shot to add more excitement back into the game. And that's why I, I think you'll like terrible. it. I think you'll like it because of that reason. I mean, basically now, at least until late in the season, it's like an extra 10 seconds before the, you know, touch back and put it at the 25, maybe go to commercial. Now, at least you'll have a play to watch. So from that standpoint, not all the time, but the majority of the time, I think it's got to be a positive. Got to be. And I'll tell you one guy who's got oh, 32 guys who have a chance of making a positive. That's the defensive coordinators in the league because there's now pressure on them. That's another play where they're going to be definitively involved on both return and coverage. So, Michael Clay, get ready to do some extra coaching. All right. Uh, we got our buddy. I got my pal Glenn Mack now ready to rock and roll. He just uh, one of us who said technical issues today it's not you glenn it's everybody is this the internet's going nuts today uh but thank you for logging back in you just heard us wrapping up talking about the kickoffs are you ready for some exciting kickoff action in the nfl this year love it love, love it. it i miss the kickoff yeah. big time over the years yeah. listen i you know i'm i'm old enough to remember gail sayers for god's sakes and 
<laughs> Devin Hester and, you know, Brian Billy Mitchell. Billy White Shoes Johnson. Give Billy White Shoes yeah. Johnson, Widener Zone from Delaware yeah. County. Come on yeah. now. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. I've missed the kickoff. It is the most boring. The extra point got a little bit better, I guess, when they moved it back. Um, but uh, once that happened, the kickoff became the most boring part of the game. So bring back kickoff returns. I'm very excited to see how it will work with the with the blockers and the defenders that close. And oh my goodness, they took advice from the XFL. Yeah, who would have thought? Uh, you know, you know why, Glenn? Because the XFL no longer exists. It's the UFL. Uh. The only <laughs> they took the the spider cam from the XFL that camera yeah. that over the top, but they never do it until the league is defunct because they don't want to admit they. You know, something was might have missed something. You know, yeah. Somebody else, yeah. yeah. But now you just gave us a history lesson, Glenn. Kick returners, some of the great kick returners of all time. You're a veteran scribe. You're a veteran uh, talker about the NFL. What is the first time you heard the term hip hip drop tackle? Last year. Yeah. Last season, I never knew it before yeah. last season. No. I think I kind of understand what it is, although there does appear to be two parts. Oh, boy, kind of the inadvertent one and then the one where you deliberately put your butt on a guy's ankles or, or, yeah. or feet. It seems and, to and be the him. swivel is the problem, yeah. the hip yeah. drop swivel tackle. I only bring that up because of the labeling, because the first <laughs> time I heard it was last year, the NFL labeled it. Yeah. And now yeah. all of a sudden it had to be out of the game. It's so dangerous. And I'm sure you guys discussed this uh, earlier today or in the last couple of days, but I, my bottom line on this, I think Jody and I discussed this when we were together on Sunday, is it's one more thing that the referees are just mm. not going to be able to catch yeah. in real time yes. that will, one, slow down the game, and two, potentially have a really large impact at the wrong time in games for something that's marginal. And I will cite uh, roughing the passer as the as the precursor to this because we saw games we have seen games where there's a marginal ticky tack guy touches a quarterback's helmet with his fingertip and all of a sudden it's 15 yard penalty the drive continues the game is effective and that stuff really hurts the game and i don't really blame the referees because it's impossible to do it in the time and the speed and everything that they're doing it in and this is just going to make it more impossible for them to do their job and G Mac, there's a possibly possibility that it can affect the game, but not as directly as you just stated, which would be the most obvious. 15 yards, key spot, boom, could change a game. No, I'm gonna go to our guy Slay, who has taken to social media a couple times in this entire conversation, as he's gonna go even harder now that it's official rule. You're gonna see missed tackles this year. We saw way too many missed tackles on the Eagles in the second half. So it was without the hip drop. <laughs> potentially. Uh, Slay put it on there, and I, I agree. Yeah. They're going to find guys. They, they're uh, Troy Vincent has been very cagey with the way he's talking about this. It may not result in as many flags as you think, but after the fact, oh, they'll be fines. There are guys, we're going to review it with a fine-tooth comb. And we're going to throw fines at players who do this hip drop tackle thing. Well, guess what? The players are going to go, all right, well, I'm not going to pull them down the way that I used to because I'm not paying $15,000 just because if he runs through my arms, so be it. I made the effort. That's where you won't necessarily, um, it, but it could have an effect down the road. At, at the risk of inciting one more time, Darius Slay's social media ire as I have in the past, if there's somebody who knows about missed tackles, it would be him. Um, I don't know about if I agree with you or him, because I think in the moment players, just their instinct takes over and they do what they have to do. And I don't think they're thinking about their wallet as they're chasing a guy down. I really don't. I think players just, you know, they've been trained for so many years. They act instinctively. Now, maybe in a few years from now, when it's new players and the league, younger players that are raised with this rule, they'll see it. But I think for now that uh, players are going to do what they're going to do. We're going to see the call. It's going to be ridiculous. It's like if I may switch sports for a moment. There's now this this rule in baseball tagging the guy out at second if you're yeah. in the way. Like, what the hell is that? This is like that. That You'll see it, and it's like, I have no idea why what I just saw was illegal, but it was. Yeah. Well, you know, and when you were in the green room, Glenn, Jody was talking about some of the gambling issues now that are mm -hmm. pervasive through sports with Otani and baseball, NBA, 
yeah. college uh, basketball locally with Temple UAB game. Eagles, Isaiah Rogers got suspended last year. Calvin mm -hmm. Ridley, they tried to trade for Calvin Ridley, but guess what? He was suspended yeah. uh, back a couple of years ago. If you put this type of rule, doesn't that open up more avenues for, you know, 15 yards? I can affect a game. Bang. But you, you mentioned. Oh, you're saying a guy, a guy yeah. may be whatever throwing shaving and so therefore yeah. he'll deliberately get a tackle it's a lot a lot easier I mean, not, yeah. not, not to tackle necessarily but, but that same way but the hip drop you could have an official a tim donahy oh of, oh of the, the official NFL. oh yeah. okay the official yeah. yeah listen um i'll back up and say that i'm perfectly fine with sports betting being legal i think people should have the right to do what they want to do but i think we are naive to think that we are not currently seeing the impact of that uh, who's the player on the Raptors yesterday? They had to sit yeah, down. I just because, brought him up. Yeah, yeah Dante Rogers. Um, Rogers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, you know, that, so so that, that looks like some pretty uh, damning evidence, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. The prop was what one half a three point attempt. <laughs> uh, I got to go to the men's room. Sorry, I can't come back and you play. Got a scratched right. uh, cornea. I got uh, right. Okay, so mouth syndrome. Right, so um, I think that we mostly talk about that with players. But your point to Tim Donahue is exactly right. It's the officials are the ones who make less money, who can have a dramatic impact on the game, and because yes. so many of these penalties are judgment penalties, right? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. My judgment is that it was, and you cannot overturn this one because this is what I deem to see. Uh, clearly, John, we are headed for the possibility of that kind of scandal. Absolutely. All right. John and I debated this in hour number one. We need your take on it. Howie Roseman called Saquon Barkley special yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's a special town. He's a special player. How do we define special? John and I kind of debated some statistics that you could use for it. It's pretty difficult to come up with ones. Uh, not impossible, but difficult. Uh, you can always fall back on I, when I see special, I know special. Yeah, well, that's that's too easy. Right? The eye yeah, test. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the eye, eye test, test is too, too easy, easy. Which means that I can't tell you, but it's in my mind. I agree, um, yes. All right, if I'm going to put stats on it in this NFL, I would say somewhere in the nature of, for a running back, somewhere in the nature of 1,800 yards receiving, rushing, receiving combined, right? 1,200 rushing, six, 600 receiving, something along those ways. That would make you an elite top six, eight, ten running back in the league. So I would go with that. Uh, I think in Barkley's case, uh, I want to see 20 touches or more a game on an average is, is going to be special. LaShawn McCoy, I'm thinking in the top of my head, was the last special running back. The Eagles had, I think that Barkley, again, you're getting him with some mileage, but Barkley has the talent certainly to be that. And LaShawn McCoy to me was a special running back. Um, Nick Sirianni at the coach's breakfast this morning, Glenn, compared the addition of Saquon Barkley to AJ Brown uh, a couple of years ago, who has proven to be special as a receiver. Um, at least when he's not complaining about getting the football. He's been a home run. <laughs> a little twist there. Yeah. He's <laughs> been a home run as a player. He's I and Jody will tell you, I, I say he's the best pure football player on the Eagles, AJ Brown. I believe that. I mm -hmm. believe that. Okay. Um are the are 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 they placing when Howie says special and, and Nick says, Oh, this is like getting AJ Brown. Are they putting too much of a bar on Saquon Barkley? Um, no, I think that's fair. Do that. No, I think it's fair. Now, y you may not get it for three years, right? Because again, yeah. there's there's some mileage on this car, and and the 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 third year, who knows what he's going to be? But this year, coming in with the motivation he has, and all of the talk about how they're going to design the offense to put him in a Christian McCaffrey kind of position, and that's their expectation. Not, nobody's as good as Christian McCaffrey, but I'll take ninety percent of that. Um, no, I think I think Saquon Barkley is is a magnificent has been a magnificent football player playing for mostly a bad team. Put him on a good team with a better offensive line, a quarterback um, who's got talent and wide receivers, tight end who can take the focus. You know, take it so you can't play eight men in the box. I I'm I'm very pumped about that. Again, for 2024, 
I don't know if it's going to work in 2026, but for this year, I think it's going to be pretty dynamic. And we'll see how that shakes out. I uh, I ran this by Tommy Lawler, I guess, previous to you. I disagreed with him. I'm disagreeing with a lot of people today. Um, <laughs> can, do you consider CJGJ a physical player? How he specifically went out of his way to talk about we added back physicality. He certainly added added back swag, which I don't think anybody would argue with. He does bring swag, and he brings playmaking ability. Did you think of CJ GJ as a physical player at safety for the Eagles the year that he was here? Not in the mold of the traditional, you know, not in a Brian Dawkins huge hitting mode. I think of him more as an enthusiastic player. I'm trying to think of the word I want to use. As an energetic player. How about that? I, I think go he's energetic. Energy, energy. Yeah, I, yeah, can yeah. I, can I yeah. add, I, I would say, because I agreed with Tommy Glenn, I would say modern physical player. I, I agree with you. He ain't Brian Dawkins. Right. He ain't no, Malcolm Jenkins. Right. You can't play that way. You're not allowed to do that. You're, you can't. Yeah, you I, can't I'd play say, that way. In, yeah. in the context of today's game, he leans on the physical side of it, but he's not, you know, if we're going to put percentages, he's not, you know, one of the top 10, 15% at his position. I think he's on the physical side, but I think more than that, he brings an energy and he he's a playmaker, which they haven't had back there. So I, I would... That's how I would characterize him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bonte Maddox I brought up because one of the things I get uh, bothers me about certain Eagles fans is whenever Avante got injured, they would say, not everybody, but a few people would say, uh, he's made of glass. I would always hate that because for his size, he was tremendously physical. And I think that's part of the reason he would get hurt is because he played like he was 210 215 pounds, yeah. but he's 180 soaking wet. And I yeah. said he's a pretty physical player, and that contributed to his injuries. I feel the same way a little bit about CJ. I think he's physical for his size, for the era. He throws his body around. But, yeah, he's not Brian Dawkins. Well, he better stay healthy. I mean, you know, as you said, Devontae Maddox. Devontae Maddox is a good player in those moments that he could play, but all too often he couldn't play. I, I'm not going to you know, uh, speak disparagingly about a guy because he got hurt. That's just what happens. Yeah. But but uh, you sign uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson to a contract, and you, again, it's a position where you don't have a lot of depth. He better he better play this season. All right, uh, Glenn, Nick Sirianni talked to some of the members of the media, and um, I have not seen a video or anything, but I've yeah. seen a couple quotes on Twitter, and he has been asked about melding he and his new offensive yeah. coordinators offense together and the meshing and the melding and everything else. We'll see. He can say whatever he wants here in March. Sure. Uh, it can either sound like the greatest thing ever or what the hell is going to happen. Doesn't matter. Once they get out there on the field, we'll actually see what our own two eyes. We'll see if it'll work. I think it's going to be good. I kind of hope it's going to be good, but I don't know it's going to be good. Which is a bigger concern for a guy like you who's uh, covering the team and doing the pregames and stuff? The melding of those two worlds or the extra pressure on Sirianni this year, number one, because people really thought there was a percentage of people that thought he should have been fired, and he wasn't, and he did get to keep his job. And number two, no Cox, no Kelsey. They lose two big leaders in that locker yeah. room, which means the coach has got to pick up at least some of that stack. Some players will have to try and step into the lurch. Nobody's going to do it as well as those two guys did. But Terry's and he's going to have to pick up some of that slack culture and everything else. Which concerns you more at this stage? Extra pressure, extra responsibility on Sirianni or Sirianni and uh, his new offensive coordinator melding perfectly? Second one. Uh, I'm sorry, the first one. You reverse the order on me. I'm sorry. The the culture of the team, the leadership of the team, who's left, who's there. One of the things this this franchise had magnificently over the over the years is a, a, a great clubhouse locker room locker room environment with uh, Fletcher Cox and Jason Kelsey and Brandon Graham, who's still there, and you know some of the guys who are still there. But I mean, they 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 survived the whole Wentz thing, and you know, and ended up being a really good friend that would have that would have torn some franchises apart and they were able to do it they had some stuff last year you mentioned aj brown whatever that was but uh, you know i don't think that's 
I, I think that was very problematic at the end of the year. And I think they need to find their cultural bearing early this year and the leaders have to step up. I saw, I read, as you did some stuff, Nick said today, said he thinks Jordan Mylotta can be that guy. Uh, we say Landon Dickerson maybe is a guy with leadership skills. I, I don't know. I, I can't address that. But I think you do need those guys who really set the culture. And um, don't take this as a criticism of Jalen Hurts, but Jalen Hurts, as, we, as we've known, as we've seen as a very quiet guy, is not a demonstrative guy. There were some complaints about that last year. So it's not going to be him. It's just not his nature. Other guys have to step up, and um, Nick needs them to do that. If that answers your question. It does. And just let me add quickly, and then, Johnny, you can ask your question. Um, when they had the press conference for Landon, when he got the big extension mm -hmm. or whatever, I got a good nap at that time. Um, <laughs> Landon is not All right, really you know. a... Well, he's, remember, he, Landon... He's not Jason Kelsey in a mummer's outfit. No, I'll give you he's that. not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Great Landon, player. Uh, earned the, earned the yeah. extension. More power to him. Yeah. I want him on my football team. Yeah. Not Mr. Personality. No. You know, one, one thing we've learned uh, about the Eagles drafting Alabama players over recent seasons... Nick Saban actually had media classes yeah. for his players. Yeah. And they don't Smart. say anything. Yeah. I, all of them. And they yeah. are trained that way. But Landon behind the scenes is different. It's different. He's got a good personality. So maybe it works. But, you know, Kelsey's, those are big shoes to fill when it comes to leadership. And I don't know if you can expect anybody to step in those shoes. But uh, one guy's got bigger shoes than that. Uh, is Jeffrey Lurie, uh, Glenn Mack now. And yeah. Jeffrey is going to speak today for maybe the only time this year. Yes. Sometimes yeah. he does it twice. A training but, camp usually. Yeah. Right? You sometimes, a sometimes camp. not. Um, you know, it's interesting this year because of Nick Sirianni. And, and two part, do you think Jeffrey's going to address potentially moving on? Do you think he's going to talk about that part of it? And I see you shaking your head. No, I you, you talk about with, in terms of Nick. In terms of Nick. Oh no, no. My no. bigger he, question. My bigger yeah. question, though, is: Is Nick Sirianni a lame duck? Uh, the answer to the first question is: He's smart enough that if he's asked, "Did you consider uh, moving on from Nick?" He has to say, "Never crossed my mind." That's all. That's that's, and he can't. He cannot open that door ajar. The answer is the will, second. He will. And by the way, Glenn, you're a hundred percent right, but it will take him 15 minutes. To say that. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, know, you didn't ask me that. You didn't ask me if, about brevity. No. Uh, yeah. I, okay. The second uh, part is I th absolutely think he's a lame duck. I think that every story before the season of, you know, who's the first coach to be fired. Who's the coach on the hot seat. It, it's him. He barely survived. And I, you know, you talk about people who think he shouldn't have survived. I was among those who thought, man, that team collapsed. Unless you can give me a bigger reason than, than the coach got away from the coach, I think it was something that they absolutely should have considered is replacing the coach. So if they get off to a one and three start, given that you now have very experienced coordinators, either of whom could step in, I absolutely, hey, here's hoping it does. Here's a four and oh, hoping yeah. that they're four and oh and everything is great. But if you ask me, is a lame duck? Yeah, don't you think? All right. A partner yeah. of mine once famously asked the manager of the Phillies, oh. so how's the team? <laughs> um, <laughs> when when they when the question comes out today to Jeff Laurie, so how's Julian? What mm -hmm. brevity are we talking about here? Will he expound on how his son is doing? Mm. You're seeing other franchises with the spout, the children taking over and even <clears throat> selling them. Will he be asked about it and will he address the succession, one of the best shows ever on television, a uh, plan of the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, great question. Um, I hope he's asked about it. You know, you don't know how much time there is and who's shouting out questions and if he's going to stay for half an hour or longer, but I hope that's a question. And if it is, I think his answer is. Uh, I'm delighted to have Julian as part of the organization. He's learning a lot of different aspects of it, and he's been very helpful. And uh, I think we're going to have a very um, exciting future together. 
Next question. I think that Ooh, I don't think he'll give you much. I don't think he'll give you much beyond that. He's going to Drew Rosen house you with the next. Well, I don't know that part, but he, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's wow. going to give you more than he's a valuable part of the organization and the future is going to be great. That's all. Um, I, I've criticized Jeffrey for how he handled <laughs> the situation after the season, but overall, Glenn Mack now, he is a tremendous NFL owner. Great I, owner. I believe. Great um, owner. Is he the best owner um, in modern? Philadelphia sports history. Define modern. Uh, say we'll go back to Ed Snyder. Okay. Madden. Well, then the answer is Ed Snyder because Ed yeah. Snyder founded a franchise and, uh, you know, kept them. I understand they haven't won uh, the Stanley Cup in what will soon be 50 years, but created a franchise that year in and year out was good out of scratch and, and built a relationship with the fan base and built the arena and Ed Snyder is, is, is the high bar. Um, so let me think. Uh, I think John Middleton's doing a great job, but I certainly would put Laurie above anybody the Phillies have had. Uh, Sixers. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's, let's not go there. Uh, and so uh, I and, think that's it. And cash uh, replacing Snyder would be the yeah. only other one you can come to. Yeah, and, and it's and it's too new for you know. I mean, Jeff Lurie won a Super Bowl and got two others, and those guys are new and looking good. But uh, so I'd say it's Snyder one, Lurie two, and probably a pretty steep drop after that. And that's probably that's pretty much the way I look at it as well. All right, G Mac, we got Lurie, we got uh, Sirianni, Howie Roseman spoke. When all the niceties yeah. are over and done with, they're going to get back to football. They got one more race in their sleeve up before oh, yeah. the draft. The draft is going to be the draft, and yeah, you know, we'll get you back on before the draft and get you to speculate with us. But they still have pretty good cap space. We'll find out a little bit more today because John just gave us the details on TJ GJ's deal. They're now on record, so they have a little less cap space. They're still in position to make one more play. Yeah, Justin Simmons. Anything else? Do they have a big play left in them before the draft rolls around? Well, I don't know what's going to happen with Hassan Reddick, right? And it looks like they're in no rush to trade him, which I think is the smart strategy on their part. Don't be pressured into it. And when you look at what Kansas City got for Snead, which was just a third yeah. rounder, it's like, mm, yeah. if that market speaks to Reddick, it suggests it's not going to be a big haul. And so I'm not eager to, to move Hassan Reddick for, you know, 25 cents on the dollar. Um yeah, I think they do because they always do, and we've seen moves that occurred in May and June that were big ones. I don't. You said Simmons. I would love to see that. Not sure who it is. Uh, God, I hope it's on defense. <laughs> I mean, I'm bringing Justin Simmons to the table. <laughs> yeah, the defense. Yeah, I mean, just you know. Yeah, I think the the, def the offense looks pretty set to me. I don't know. You know, one guard position is maybe a little weak, but that's about it. Offense is is good. Defense needs a lot of help. Uh, at real Glenn Mac now follow Glenn on X. I love your profile picture, by the way, Glenn. Now, oh, thank you. Uh, that was that from the play. Is that uh, that? That's uh, I got to think. What do I have there now? Hold on, let me look because I changed it recently. My profile. Oh no, that a commercial I did uh, for my brewery, Conchock and Brewing Company, where I played Ben Franklin. Nice, nice. So that's uh, me in my Ben Franklin outfit. Yes, right, uh, you play Ben Franklin. What are you playing in the new play you're in? Thank you for asking. I am uh, in the play Diary of Anne Frank, which is going to be at the Players Club of Swarthmore, April 19th through May 4th. And nice. I play Mr. Von Don, who is one of the seven boarders living in that attic for all those years during World War II. Yeah, it's 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 a powerful play, but it actually has moments of humor in it as well and really? uplifting. Yeah, it does. And and all that. And yeah, thank you for asking. It's, it's going to be pretty good. But no Frau Brucker. No, no, that was the last <laughs> one. Young Frankenstein was the yeah. last one, and that was also a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy doing that. Yeah. GMAC, I enjoy doing it with you on Sundays. Uh, this Sunday, we're out, not going yeah, to the, I know. the week thereafter. You and me again. Yeah, Thanks. look forward to it. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thanks for Glenn. Us Appreciate Thank it. Glenn Mack now, Eagles pregame show host. He's been doing it for a decade plus. Believe it or not, some, some people know this. Most don't. The Eagles pregame show host went from Mac to Mac. I did it for four years. 
All they did was go to the championship game for four straight years when I was the host of the Eagles pregame show on their radio network. And then uh, Glenn. I did over. not know that. Why oh, yeah. aren't they revisiting that and saying, all right, if Jody's there, we're going to go back we're gonna go to, to the, a championship uh, game. Yeah. Four straight years. That was my four year run as the Eagles host on 94.1 WYSP. YSP was the home of the Eagles before WIP. It was WIP. Then it went to YSP. Then it came back to WIP. But I was the host when it was uh, when when it was an FM pregame show, but not on the current ninety four YSP. Old WIP. school rock for all yes. those. And the Philadelphia Eagles and their pregame yes. show hosted by yours truly. And then Glenn got it. And he's been doing it ever since. So uh, always fun catching up with my buddy G Mac here on the YouTube side. All right, we got to come back. We got to catch up one more thing. I am going to attempt to get John McMullen to accept my number of what would make Saquon Barkley special. 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 I got the definite, the number special, the numeric definition of special for Saquon Barkley. I'm going to run by John when we come back. And put a bow on the show here on Birds 365. <laughs> Imagine for a moment that you went to work today, and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian. In my heart, I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. All right, last couple minutes here, Birds 365. Good show today, mostly, mostly because Tommy Lawler and Glenn Mack. Now appreciate both of those guys <laughs> uh, streaming in. Um, G Mac, we start. Uh, J Mac, we started the show off today talking about Saquon Barkley because Howie Roseman called him special. We went back and forth on how do you define special? Can you put a number on it? How can you look at the the, the season he's about to have? 
adding in esoteric things that he can do to it. But hard and fast numbers. Let's try and come up with a hard and fast number. And I said, because I think he's as good a pass catcher as he is, and we don't know what kind of pass catching he's going to do for the Eagles because the truth is that they haven't had that as a big aspect of the team during Jalen Hurts' run as their starting quarterback. So it's kind of speculative. But I tried to come up with a number, so I looked them up specifically. This year, after DeAndre Swift had a really nice season here and people wanted him back and shoot, the Eagles were trying to bring him back. They, they, There's a chance they could have, if DeAndre was their number, they might have just gotten him done and said, okay, we're not getting into the Saquon market. But DeAndre's number went up and they said, for the extra that we got to play for Saquon, let's go to get Saquon. Um, DeAndre Swift was outside the top 10 in total yards from scrimmage this year of running backs. He was 11th. Uh, 10 other running backs. Not bad, there. by the way. I, I'm surprised exactly. that high. Not, not too damn bad for a guy you got for, what'd they give up? Like a fifth for a third, a swap of a yeah, pick? Yeah, they, they, it was like, yeah, it was draft positioning. I have to double check. It was like a, they got a six back and they gave a four, something like that. Something like that. So not a ton. And then to get him number 11 total yards from scrimmage in the NFL pretty damn good. Thank you very much for a good season, DeAndre Swift. But he was 11 and he was less than... 1,300 yards, 1,263 combined. There were only three backs in the NFL that were over 1,500 yards because I gave you the 1,500-yard number. There's only three backs in the league this past year who were over 1,500. I know you know one. You want to take a guess on the other two? Oh, uh, I'm not a stat guy. Uh, Derek Henry, I assume. Uh, I don't know no, what kind of year he is. He's in the top 10, not in the top three. Um, who led the league in uh, – I don't know. I don't McCaffrey's I don't. number one, as you should well expect. Number two, Brees Hall of the Jets. Oh, yeah. And number that? three, you talk about a guy who lit it up at the end of the season as much, if not more so, than Aaron Jones. James Cook of Buffalo. Yeah, James, he had a good year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the Eagles got swept for a 2025, 2025 fourth round pick and a swap of 2023 seventh round picks. So. That's yeah, they didn't give up. They didn't give that up was, much. That was a hell of an acquisition by yeah. Howie. But if uh, Saquon Barkley gets, and it runs similar to last year, if he gets 1,600 yards combined rushing and passing, that would, as per last year, place him at number two in the NFL behind only Christian McCaffrey, who was the only guy who was over 2,000 yards combined. If he gets to that position, John, 1,600 yards and number two in the NFL overall combined yardage, would that make Saquon Barkley special in your eyes? <clears throat> no. Um, oh, man, you're harsh. Well, you're the hard, only, you are such a hard grader. You, you said um, you gave the three names, right? Only one of those guys is special. Uh, and that's harsh. that's that's what we're talking about, and that's what the Eagles are talking about. So when I look at Christian McCaffrey, James Cook is a very good player. He's not special. Brees Hall is a very good player. He's not special. Christian McCaffrey is special. Um, when I look at Saquon Barkley, I say go go to his rookie season. That was special. If he can duplicate that. That's special. I, I, I do we have time? I'll pull right, it up. So there's quickly. there's only one special back in the National Football League. Guys yes, McMullen. Okay. Yes, according to the Eagles as well. Well, they're they're saying there's two. Yeah. Um, they're trying to make it. That's it. So in his rookie year, thirteen hundred seven yards rushing, five yards per carry, eleven touchdowns, ninety one receptions, seven hundred twenty one yards, four touchdowns. So you're talking about 2,000 total yards, 15 touchdowns. That's freaking special. If they can get back to that, that's what they're talking about. What was McCaffrey this year? What was uh, what was total his, yards? Uh, yeah, over 2,000. 2023. That's special. That's How about, special. I didn't even realize that. 2023 and 2023, he had 2,023 yeah. yards in the year 2023. He he's special. Saquon was special in 2018. What 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 a 2018 in the NFL is an eternity. Can he turn back the clock? Maybe he's got the better supporting path, but that's special. James Cook is not special. 
He's good. Brees Hall, you know, you're a Jets guy. You know, you're not going to call Brees Hall. Right, but here, no, here's what I will say about Brees Hall. He had a special year last year. And I know they signed Saquon to a three-year contract, but you and I both know it's a two-year contract. Can Saquon Barkley be special this year? I think he can. I think he could easily be second or third total yards from scrimmage in the NFL. And if he is, that would qualify as special for me. Mine it, mine is a high bar. I freely admit it. But I, that high bar has been set by the Philadelphia Eagles. That's where I'm getting it from. Because they've compared his presence to Christian McCaffrey. And that's what they think they're getting. So that's my bar. Today, Nick Sirianni compared him to A.J. Brown, who is a freaking special football player. That's who I'm, That's my comp. The Eagles set my bar. All right, wait, hold, on, hold on. A.J. Brown's a special football player. A.J. Brown didn't rank as high as second in any stat in the NFL like Brees Hall did. A.J. Brown, a, a, and again, and part of it is the esoteric nature of the presence. A.J. Brown is the best football player on the Philadelphia Eagles. He will likely remain the best football player on the Philadelphia Eagles, even though Saquon Barkley is here, because he is a dominant, dominant player. Now, I don't know where 1,496 yards it was in 2022. Um, I don't know if it were top two or top three. I don't know where 1,456 yards were last year. Um, you know, I know Jefferson was hurt, so that probably helped him. Um, yeah, he's special. And if he can if he can have the impact on the game of A.J. Brown, yeah, I will give you all the mea couples in the world. He ain't A.J. Brown. 2018 Saquon Barkley was that type of player. He ain't A.J. Brown. And the Eagles are – Nick Sirianni's the one who brought up A.J. Brown today, not me. Right. And I can put their evaluations. I just go, if he is top two or three total yards from scrimmage in the NFL, that to me would qualify as special. And I'm not worried about what his rookie year was because it was, as you just stated, a long time ago. I'm going to look at him in the context of next season, 2024. And if he puts up those kind of numbers, I'll say – Good call on special, Howie. All right, uh, we be done for the day. J-Mac, I'm back here tomorrow. You back here tomorrow? Let's do it. And, oh, by the way, hopefully nobody drops out. We had some connection issues today. So if you're watching it again after the fact, jumped in late, checking it out on YouTube, thank you very much. When you do that after the fact, feel free. Hit the like button on the way out the door. Mac and Mac, we'll be back in two and two. You've been listening to Birds 365. <laughs> The destination for the passionate Eagles football fan who bleeds green. If it's Eagles football, we're talking about it. Debate inside the locker room and guests that are some of the greatest football minds from around the region. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had a blast. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hook up with us on social media at Jacob Sports. See you next time on Birds 365. 